Hey guys and girls, Nathan here. Just thought I would hop online uh, for uh, Tuesday night Facebook Live. Uh, I've been trying to keep it consistent, uh, make sure that we are, you know, sort of here every Tuesday uh, to be able to deliver any questions you need to answer or whatnot. Um, but yeah, just a little bit late tonight, guys. Been really busy. Um, but yeah, just wanted to hop out and have a chat with you guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I've got some questions here from the community. Uh, a lot of things have been happening um, in the uh, the last week. Uh, wow, all these boxes keep popping up on my screen. Um, look, something um, really uh, interesting has been, you know, becoming more and more evident in the course of the last uh, sort of week or two, um, which is something I really want to talk about um, today. Um, and uh, yeah, like I guess that brings it back down to why you know I've been referring to it as a scamdemic. Um, but yeah, just as uh, you guys are checking in and, and tuning in, um, I'm going to cover a news article. Uh, this is from a communist news outlet called ABC. Um, there's a new article which those of you that are in Birch feed, um, I sent it to you just as I went live, uh, so we can read through it together and have bedtime stories. Um, alternatively, if you haven't got access to Birch Feed, uh, hit up my office, flick an email or a, a, a private message um, with your best contact number, and we'll add you into Birch Feed. You can't buy Birch Feed anymore; it's only uh, for those of you that are in the community. So, um, yeah, sign up and uh, get access to um, Birch Feed. So, yeah, I'll see Amber here. Uh, really value this. Thanks a lot for tuning in, Amber. Uh, Simone, uh, are you trying to give us all nightmares? <laughs> all this talk of pizza gate and these people we can't trust. Uh, wow, yes, crazy world. Um, thanks, Luke. I <laughs> um, hope everyone's having a good week. I'm just seeing all your um, uh, all your, 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 your comments here. So, and uh, yeah, um, yeah. So, with it, uh, for those of you that are you know been on Birch Feed, seeing some of the videos that I posted the last. Um, last few days, apologies for um, you know scaring you. Apologies for posting some interesting content in there. Uh, I think it's really important that you get to see what's really happening out there. Um, basically, you know, lots of information is coming out via the media. Uh, this newest one that I posted in Birch Feed just now, uh, I'm going to read to you. Um, and some really scary things that we have uh, that we have um, you know, been witnessing. So this one here is saying coronavirus lockdowns could end in months if if uh, Australians are willing to have their movements monitored. <laughs> you probably got more freedom in jail at the moment, guys. Uh, the battle against the coronavirus is going high tech with Australians to be asked to download their phone app that will monitor their movements, but only their expressions of the express permission. The app will monitor people's daily interactions using GPS. It will be an opt-in, but require at least 40% of Australians to use it to be effective. The Attorney General is considering the privacy implications. Basically, this is a, uh, a data grab here. And... Um, People are being tracked, tagged. You know, when was the last time anyone got a cat, a dog, a cow, uh, any sort of livestock? Um, you know, that's what you normally microchip. Um, we're seeing in a world now. I just made an art, put an article up. Um, there's um, some things called blood sacrifices that occur. Uh, that's what uh, some of you that are in Birchfield are referring to. Um, basically, um, not blood sacrifice, spirit cooking. Um, the new face of Microsoft um, is uh, this uh, this lady here. This I is an app. That art of the future is is that not creepy as fuck? Is it just pure transmission this is a new Microsoft ad, guys. And that chick there, go researcher. I'm not going to go too far into it. I'll probably get censored from, uh, from platforms and the platforms as well. So... On that note, I'm going to try and keep it mainly to financial and, you know, they can't de-platform me from over in, uh, in Birchfeed. So if you want to get the fun stuff, it's over there. Um, what is happening out there in the uh, property markets? What's happening out there in the finance markets? Um, I want to talk a little bit, bit about that today. Uh, a lot of people are, um, there's two main things that people are commenting on. Uh, one is about rents. 
and the other one is about um, uh, the property market and the property prices falling. So I'm going to start off by talking just purely property markets and what I'm seeing out there in the marketplace. So firstly, uh, Gladys Berry Jicklian, or however you pronounce her name, has uh, has come out and offered a I think 440 uh, million dollar rental assistance package. Uh, basically um, saying that if a tenant's in a bad spot, then they will start covering the rent, which is a, a start to, uh, to unfold uh, on this front, uh, which is very uh, interesting. Uh, I think they're going to have to do a lot more than that. Um, but, you know, there's lots of buffers to be put in place. I'm seeing a lot of people getting asked by their property manager uh, or their on-site manager, whoever's looking after their property, to consider... <coughs> Got a bottle of water today, guys. Um, to consider rent reductions and whatnot. Um, no one should be getting a rent reduction. Um, maybe a payment plan is a possibility, um, but you know the tenant must prove that they've got hardship. They are, you know, will wreck their credit file. Um, how we, uh, you know, handle the situation is delicate, obviously, because a lot of people will get up in arms and say, "Oh, you can't say this about a tenant." Well, you're in a contractual agreement to lease a property just as the owner is in a contractual agreement to pay their mortgage and pay their council rates and pay all the other associated costs. So in my opinion, it is very important for the tenant to uphold their uh, obligations. Um, and, you know, there needs to be room to, um, you know, assist in sometimes, but they're obliged to. And if they don't pay, then, you know, they can either deal with the wrath of the insurance company coming after them to sue them for damages after they uh, you claim the insurance. Alternatively, um, you, you know, as a, as a real estate agent, you can, um, you know, take civil actions against the tenant and start debt collection processes on them. So really important to make sure that you just don't roll over um, because a tenant has said, oh, you know, poor me, um, you know, oh, I've lost my job or, or whatever. And that, that happens, right? And I'm not trying to be insensitive. Um, you know, sometimes I can be blamed as being insensitive and that's okay as well. Um, but you know, as as a as an investor, you've got obligations, and as a um, tenant, they have obligations to fulfil as well. So you need to be you know open to look at that, but to blatantly just go, okay, I'm going to drop your rent from four hundred dollars down to two hundred dollars or whatnot. Uh, that's ridiculous. Uh, the tenant is still obliged to pay, um, and they are to accrue losses. Um, but under no circumstances um, are they to do anything else. Um, in relation to the um, like the the, the, the the amount of tenants not paying out there, um, tenants are still paying rent. Um, haven't done the disbursements. The disbursements I do on Wednesday. So what we've been doing uh, on behalf of our owners uh, since this came into play is instead of paying monthly um, you know rents, whether it be uh, end of month or mid month, what. Um, randomly got some email from myself from my office. Um, so yeah, with it, um, forget what I was going to say. Have a complete mind blank now, guys. <laughs> Maybe the MK Ultra is happening. Is he? Looking through my computer screen. Um, uh, yes, what I was saying was the, um, the uh, rents were being uh, paying out and dispersing rental incomes for our owners on a weekly basis. So some of you may not, um, you know, this is a, the benefit of having assets because you've got more options, right? People say, oh, okay, what about if something goes wrong, right? Let's say you've got 10 investment properties at the moment and you, um, you know, may have lost your job, but you've got your 10 rents coming through and you put your mortgages on hold for the next six months and you've got those 10 rents, you can still feed, fend for yourself and look after yourself. So, yeah, you know, having options out there and restructuring your options if you've lost your job, what sort of uh, structuring could, could you put in place? What sort of strategies could you put in your place? There's all different things that you could do. So um, what we've been doing on behalf of our owners is doing disbursements. Um, this wasn't something that was requested from the community. I just made the, um, the, the executive decision to do it uh, effective immediately, which was to pay our owners on a weekly basis, meaning that cash flow is still very regular. Every Wednesday, uh, monies get dispersed from, uh, from our trust to our owners uh, and they get paid 
their rent on a weekly basis. So, um, you know, that helps out for those of you that may have lost your jobs, may have, you know, have a bit of struggling in your business, having more regular cash flow coming through can help you navigate and, and juggle through this period. So, um, yeah, as for property prices, um, I'm seeing a lot of articles come out about, you know, there's going to be an expected 20% drop in prices or 40% drop in prices. Um, reality of it is, is that, uh, you know, we may see a slight dip in property prices, but I'm not seeing it. Um, I've been getting gazumped on lots and lots of deals of recent times. Uh, there's a lot of activity out there, a lot of buyers. I feel that there's a couple of different camps of people. Some people are out there trying to take advantage of the market at the moment. Some people are very scared. Uh, but as an overview, um, I buy from coast to coast uh, in Australia. So I'm purchasing properties in Western Australia, in Sydney, Queensland, Victoria even, Adelaide, uh, all around Australia. Um, some markets have been affected for five years. Some markets have been affected for three years. Some markets are in recovery mode. If we look at areas like the Gold Coast, that is currently booming at the moment. Uh, properties, you know, prices have gone up, or a lack of stock in the marketplace. Um, and there is a reason behind that. And only my, uh, my uh, investor clients that I uh, represent on purchasing understand it's something that hasn't even been announced in the news and it's something that's really important that's why there's a boom going on up there um, and we're in that market sort of you know five years before it happened um, looking at uh, you know the, the the markets you know in in western australia uh, those those markets you know we're picking up stuff for a hundred thousand dollars that used to sell for two hundred and fifty thousand uh, fifty thousand they used to sell for three hundred thousand uh, rent for like 200, 300 bucks a week on these properties. Um, so there's lots of good opportunities out there uh, in capital cities. Uh, capital cities you can buy as cheap as 100 grand inside a capital city in the city region, um, all the way up from that. Uh, there's opportunities out there in the marketplace. Um, you know, buying things while other people are scared is always a, a favorite pastime of mine. Uh, this, this time in the market, and you know, people are asking me, Nathan, look, um, you know, so you say there's opportunities, but I don't have money or I don't have this or I don't have that, right? Opportunities doesn't just exist from buying a property, right? Opportunities exist from getting some fantastic human capital um, at a very affordable price, right? People uh, want to work, right? People want a job at the moment. Um, there's businesses that need help. There's businesses that need assistance. There's, um, you know, there's a, it's incentives coming from different sort of government agencies and departments. There's opportunities. It's important to constantly be looking for the data, constantly be looking for the knowledge to be able to see where these opportunities are arising from. Um, and um, yeah, being able to, to jump onto those opportunities. Is the market going to drop by 20%? Let me tell you. Uh, Western Australia has dropped maybe 50% in some areas, 60% in some areas, even up to 80% in other areas uh, over the course of the last five years. Is that going to drop anytime soon? I'll touch on that in a moment. It won't, in my opinion, right? No financial advice, just crazy guy talking about uh, random stuff on, on Facebook. Um, if we look at areas like the Gold Coast and Brisbane, uh, Gold Coast is experiencing a boom. Uh, Brisbane is you know, holding up very strong. Have uh, a look at Sydney. Sydney um, getting gazumped very, very regularly. Uh, properties being gobbled up on a consistent basis. Uh, people paying more than asking prices. Um, and it's a very regular occurrence. If we look at the Sydney market, when APRA came in and tried to fuck the market, by doing what an interest rate rise would normally do in uh, 2016, 2017. That's when the market fell down. Uh, if we look at, you know, a lot of areas, um, say Northwest Sydney, uh, Kellyville properties that were going for 1.1 million, were going for 900,000. If you look at, um, you know, the ability of buying units in Sydney, you could pick up stuff beforehand. The entry price to Sydney was like $400,000. Uh, the entry price from, um, for Sydney at the moment, you know, it went all the way down to 230,000. So um, at the current point in the market, um, you can still pick up stuff for 280 to 300,000 in Sydney. Um, if we look at areas like Western Australia, going back to Western Australia, uh, if we look at areas such as 
um, some parts of, of Queensland even. Um, if we look at mining towns, uh, I'm going to talk about my next topic or part that I want to talk about today, and it is precious metals. Uh, it is impossible, if you go to any bullion dealer, it is impossible to get your hands on any precious metals because people are starting to flee to that. If I look at the price of precious metals, the paper contracts are artificially uh, holding and suppressing the values down. Uh, however, you can't get access to it. So if we start seeing a commodities boom, we might start seeing a mining boom. And so if we see a need for precious metals or sort of minerals that can be pulled out of the ground, um, we may see a recovery in these markets. So um, be very, very careful. Look at, you know, activity that's happening. Look at reasons as to why. Uh, as I said, I'm not going to tell anyone here why uh, the Gold Coast market is booming. I know why the Gold Coast market is booming. And it's a reason like why in 2007, 2008, in 2009, the Sydney market uh, boomed. Uh, and the reason why the Sydney market boomed in the GFC was there was a fundamental change in, in government policy. And this has occurred now recently, very recently, in uh, in Queensland, in the Gold Coast region, like in the, the southeast Queensland corridor. And if you go online and you'll start seeing properties that are for sale, they're getting gobbled up immediately, more than the asking prices, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, there's a story behind that, which uh, I'm just going to keep my... Uh, intellectual property for that for my uh, investors as to why we buy that. Um, looking at, um, yes, yeah, so just, you know, there's no precious metals out there, no gold, no silver, can't access them anywhere, no shops are selling it, uh, everything's on back order, everything's sold out, uh, appears that people are starting to freak out a little bit. Is it time to go and buy precious metals? Um, I don't buy into hype, um, so I'm not buying that. Uh, I've been accumulating slowly uh, cryptocurrencies. I've been uh, accumulating precious metals um, over the last, you know, two decades for precious metals and the last, you know, six, seven years for cryptocurrency. So um, on on that front, um, yeah, I'm already set, position set. So um, one final thing uh, is on finance, before I get into some of the questions and answers from the community, is, uh, is on finance. Um, what is happening out there in the finance market. Um, things are starting to relax, relax a little bit, uh, but it is becoming you know, interesting out there with the banks nevertheless. Uh, what a lot of people need to realise is that someone that couldn't service for a loan beforehand may be able to service now, and if they can't service now, maybe in another two or three months, they'll be able to, uh, to service. Uh, the reason being is that interest rates as have come down, you know, 1.25% um, has enabled for the servicing at the back end of the banks to uh, reduce their uh, calculators. And some of the people that were on the borderline beforehand are now in the servicing region, um, and that's only getting better. So uh, pretty cool uh, times out there in that point. Uh, should you be uh, making moves in the current market? I think now is the most exciting, exciting time. There was a chart I posted uh, on the Facebook page uh, going back a couple of weeks ago. Um, the chart that was posted was um, a chart of showing that when the market started to um, take off um, was at the middle of any sort of crisis. So whenever we've seen crisis in the past, if we look at 2008, 2007, 2009, uh, the boom, the market peaked and went backwards just before the GFC. In the GFC, with all the stimulus, it sort of positioned the market correctly and flattened it off and propped it up and went sideways for a couple of years. And then afterwards, it took off. Um, and that's what I personally foresee happening here. Um, getting access to equity, you should always get access to equity. If you think the market's going to tank, you should probably get access to equity. If you think the market's going to go up, you should probably have equity on hand. Um, make sure that you um, you know, understand what's happening out there, make sure that you're finance ready um, and being able to position yourself so you can take advantage where the market goes up, down or sideways, being able to take advantage in the current market. Um, just uh, going to have a look at some of your questions here, answer them for you. Um, uh, love to know what you think of... Um, of uh, Sarah, I'll go check that out, Lisa. Uh, 
birch feed. Yes, guys, it's birch feed, not bitch feed. Uh, <laughs> thanks for that, Mel. Um, if you're not on birch feed, you need to um, you need to get access to it, guys. And I think the the community will share in the the comments here their uh, their sentiment for it. And I haven't even gone through it yet because there's some pretty interesting uh, conversations and and content coming out. Uh, where where's this second crash? Um, don't know what you mean by a second crash. We're in the crash. We've been in the crash for quite a while. Um, we've been in the crash since 2016. It was actually the 26th of September 2016. I've shared group chats on my personal Instagram page um, about when I saw the crash coming, specific conversations that I've had. Um, but we're in the crash. We're in the recovery part of the crash, but people are freaking out. Um, this is a point to make orderly decisions. Now, my view of this market, just to be very, um, um, just looking at all your um, comments, guys. <laughs> but um, the way I look at this market, uh, and you know, correct me for being wrong, people can hate on me, whatever the case may be. Um, I just see opportunities, right? People might want to get out of something, and I've got something that they need. People, I don't force anyone to do anything, right? So. I look at the world that people should have personal liberty and freedom to be able to make the choices and moves that they want uh, to be able to you know, navigate through life. Um, if we look at um, you know, the situation, I picture that we're in a big hall. And I talked about this uh, two years ago to uh, my mentoring community that I uh, was working with at the time. Um, and I said, I see the GFD when we get here as being a big room like a hall, and it's, let's say there's 500 people in there. Let's say there's a fire in this hall and everybody starts running for the door. Let's say 450 people run for the door. As they run for the door, the fire's going to close in. It's going to ravish the place. They're going to you know, get burnt or things could go wrong. But there's still going to be a patch of people that are sitting there that are going to be really scared. They're going to start crying. They're going to get uh, frozen from uh, fear and they're not going to be able to move. Those people might also lose oxygen uh, from the fire coming. Uh, but if you're smart enough, you could hear the sirens going outside, i.e. quantitative easing, uh, stimulus packages, uh, freezing of mortgages, universal basic income, the inability for people to go bankrupt. Uh, there's lots and lots of sirens going off at the moment, guys. Uh, and calculate that there's a four-hour burn time on the brick storeroom, right? It could be the fire hose reel or it could be anything, right? There's a room in most buildings which is made out of besser blocks. Generally, it has a four-hour burn time, a stairwell, whatever the case may be. Go and hide in that cupboard, uh, understanding that you know everybody's running for the door, everybody's sitting there. You're going to run into the heart of the fire, hide in the cupboard. Reason being is that you know within four hours they're going to come in you're going to hose the place down. But the best part about it is you've picked up everyone's wallets, rings, watches, purse, and everything off the floor that all the people were silly and running to fucking stupid areas. You pick it up in an orderly fashion, walk off to the corner of the room, sit in the room for four hours, fire brigade come in, hose it all down, and suddenly you emerge from the storage cupboard that had a four-hour burn time because you calculated the chain of events that would occur and you walk out and everyone's like, I need a wallet, I need my ID, I need a phone. And amazingly, you've got everything to be able to show everyone and that's how you clean up in a market turning cycle. And uh, people might hate that I'm saying that, but I'm not trying to be insensitive, but there's, uh, you know, there's opportunities out there all around us. Uh, Michael, uh, hi, Nate. Spoken to a few investors. There seems to be a lot of renters asking for lower rents or even free rent. What's your feedback on this, Michael? I said it beforehand. Uh, tenants aren't getting a free ride. No one's getting a free ride out of this. Uh, you've got contractual obligation. Um, you know, make sure you've got your insurance policies in place. Make sure you're nurturing the tenants and educating the tenants. Um, make sure that the tenants are aware of the responsibility. One important thing when it comes to tenants, let's say that the tenant complains and says, I lost my job. Okay, cool, right? You lost your job. Let's talk about that. I wanna help you, right? You're a tenant, you've lost your job. Have a conversation. Let's see how we can help you get through this period of time. Because 
it's not a matter of being a dick. If the tenant's not there, then you don't have rent coming in, right? So you want to work with the people. However, there is a lot of tenants that are being dickheads trying to take advantage of the situation. Um, so show me that you've got a separation certificate. Show me a letter from your employer that you have lost your job. Can you do that? No, you haven't because you haven't lost your job. Well, you have lost your job and you can show it to me. Okay, thank you. I might pick up this letter from said uh, tenant that's lost their job. This is just a note from the other week when I did a video here about uh, what's happening with the bank situation. Anyway, just pretend they got their letter and they're showing me and I go, mm, 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 you've lost your job, you've got a separation certificate, fantastic. What you need to do with the separation certificate is go down to uh, Centrelink and get yourself some um, you know, support and then pay as part of that as your rent and go get some rent assistance and go get yourself some Gladys Berylogiclian or whatever her name is, uh, stimulus package to pay your rent. Um, there is no reason why tenants should not be paying rent at the moment. There is some circumstances where people have been severely uh, impacted. Uh, it could be you know, a student, it could be you know, other sort of situations. And in those positions where the people aren't eligible for any of that sort of stuff, then you know, we need to look at, okay, what can they do? Can they bring a friend in to live in the property? Can they rent out a room? Can we sort of educate and nurture them? Um, it's not sitting back going, oh yeah, oh yeah, everything's bad, let's pull the rent down, right? Like, come on, it's like the fucking dumbest thing said anyone um, to happen and it's not gonna happen on my clock, it's not gonna happen uh, on my watch or on my time. The greatest part about the property is that where people used to laugh at me and be like, oh, no, that he buys shit properties out in Western Sydney. He buys these properties which are ex-house commission or whatever. A lot of my tenants are already on Centrelink. Uh, when I get paid rent, it comes through via this thing where they take off 99 cents. It's called centre pay. And they take out the, the Centrelink actually pay direct to the real estate office and doesn't even go through the tenant. So, um, you know, a lot of these tenants are already on Centrelink. So they have no reason not to. They're just getting more Centrelink. So if someone's already on Centrelink, they're getting rent assistance and then they're getting even more Centrelink, why shouldn't they be paying their rent? I see some issues there with high-end properties, properties that are you know, very nice and have, uh, you know, high rents where the people could be, you know, copping a bit of a hiding in business or in, in whatever sort of field they're in, that's where there could be some sort of um, large issues in, into play. Uh, forcibly tagging the herd, <laughs> exactly. Um, so with, um, with the, the situation at the moment um, is, um, you know, there was someone told me beforehand that all the Chinese in China, I'd love to hear about it in Wuhan, uh, the people that are you know, uh, free to go, free to roam. They're scanning themselves using their wrist. Uh, it says it in biblical proportions, <laughs> so mark of the beast. Um, but yeah, with it, I, I talk about references to different religions. Uh, it doesn't mean that I'm you know, telling people to reading a book or anything like that. Um, but I think, you know, throughout history, uh, throughout all different religions, there is talks of things that do happen in similar sort of fashions, which are very questionable. Uh, which I think have a point of reference and, you know, whatever one's belief is or isn't, um, you know, yeah, that's where the reference point has come to. But um, it feels that there is, you know, a, a, a awakening of people out there, uh, people that are looking at people like Bill Gates and wondering how in the, you know, these videos are going to be sort of, I can picture one day that these uh, videos are all going to be wiped and, you know, something could happen to this channel. So, um, you know, it, I'm going to be very careful with how I start talking because there's a lot of um, um, controlling of uh, media and free speech being removed. Uh, if you talk about anything about um, the syringe looking thing uh, into, you know, skin, you will have your videos removed. Uh, if you talk about uh, certain people, or certain events, you'll have your videos removed and censored. And I think it's important to be aware of this. And, um, you know, who employed uh, the Windows guy to be everybody's, you know, survivor? Who employed him? Like, you need to go down and look at that level. 
because I think there's a lot of foul play being played, and that's why I called it a scamdemic, because it is really, really questionable, the things that are going on. Um, post a lot about it in Birchfeed. If you're new on Birchfeed, go and have a look back over the course of the last two years. There's lots of information about this stuff, more specifically regarding the Windows guy. Uh, very recently about using these things to control and tag and test the herd of people. So it's interesting. She's the devil's sister. Uh, love your birch feed. Uh, appreciate that, Alex. Um, there's no such thing as freedom. You're right. Uh, can you discuss how the landlord, how, do, how we get landlord insurance, Peter? Look, um, I can't do recommendations on landlord insurance. However, personally, I use the landlord only type insurer. So there's a couple out there, Terry Shear, EBM. I believe there is an embargo stopping people from being able to get that. I hate insurance companies to start off with, um, but I do hear some of the more mainstream ones like your NRMAs and Amy's and Allianz or whatever you fucking call it um, are sort of still doing it. Um, but you need to get a landlord policy. Um, if your tenants are behind in rent, these policies generally don't take effect because it's like saying I've got a smashed up car and now I want insurance. Um, but if you need help on obtaining insurances or navigating your properties through this period of time, uh, flick us uh, an email uh, at the address in the, the video description uh, or send us a direct message um, and I'll help um, you know, with my office to navigate your losses as much as we can um, by putting special policies and processes and procedures in there to uh, to ensure that we extract the most amount of rent as we can uh, from the best out of an ugly situation if you are, you know, with an unfortunate sort of real estate agent out there. Uh, Kerry, Kerry uh, landlord insurance is on hold for new insurance. Old ones are still in place, correct? That's what I was just touching on, actually. Uh, but, yeah, do check out um, uh, what else is... Uh, what other sort of insurance? There's a lot of insurance companies out there. They may not be the best policies, but um, I believe there is some still getting it because I had a few clients tell me recently they got it. Uh, do you think this COVID scam is a um, is a testing of the UBI without calling it the UBI? There's going to be absolutely no way in hell that they're going to be able to remove this uh, universal basic income. Uh, Mike, we spoke about this two years ago. Right, you know very clearly that we uh, that we spoke about this two years ago. Um, I'm just seeing messages pop up um, uh, on here. Um, yeah, thanks for sending us a message, Rob. I'll uh, forward your details to the office. But if everyone can just email the office for uh, for, for for access to Birchfeed, and, and they'll add you in there. Uh, but you, you know, Mike, that we spoke about this two years ago, um, and and before anyone even knew of what's coming. And uh, that, that was a really cool part is that we actually had a head start to this. I never would have thought in my wildest dreams, I'd, I'd turn 35 next month, you could give me a Lamborghini, a new Bentley, a Rolls Royce, um, you know, some whatever, uh, you know, as a present and looking at where we are in the market, you could never have given me something as great as this opportunity that we're seeing at the moment. I'm not trying to be a dick, anyone that's suffering out there um, but you know this corona scam scamdemic right these guys are really like these satanic sort of bad people out there um, which you know may make windows and and whatnot um, uh, you know and make them these things that they give people um, you know I can see how great of an opportunity it is for those guys, right? And everybody can have a little slice of, you know, the opportunities that are out there. Um, you know, universal basic income. I never thought in my wildest dreams it would be like this. This is fantastic. But it's um, there's opportunities and um, I believe there's a lot greater sort of scams than just the trialling of this, right? If you notice that the social distancing um, that's coming in, I had a mate yesterday told me about the new cameras that are being installed into um, supermarkets out there, biothermal or some shit, uh, biometric could be called, um, sort of cameras that scan your face and everyone's well-being and uh, next minute um, suddenly 
um, is reading your ID and it's got like it's real world sort of photographic identity of people. Um, you know, it doesn't work if there's a big crowd and everyone's huddled up, but, you know, calibrating systems and processes by having, um, you know, social distancing gaps between people, all that sort of stuff. Um, it's just like those bells that go off the 12 year indoctrination camp. We you send your kids to school, um, the bell goes off like a cow, right? And it's time to eat, kiddies. And then you get up in life and you go, well, you know, this is just life. This is how it is. And people just go through life and accept everything that they're being uh, being told into. So, um, you know, universal basic income is just one of the perks of it. Um, and it's going to be very interesting to see how it all plans out. Darren, uh, my mate, workmate, was saying all Russians are going to get ankle braces as he is Russian. This is tag and testing guys, right? Like this is tag and testing. Like this is like the mark of the beast, whether you be scanned, um, whatever it is, it's just very, very interesting times we're living guys. So, you know, if someone wants to go and put something in uh, me and try and inject something that they can get, right? I just could be very careful. We've got to be comical with our, uh, with our gestures in, in Facebook moving forward. But um, you yeah, with it, um, yeah, as far as I see, a lot of people just going and running out and asking, like, oh, please, can you give me a and try and fix up this problem, which, um, you know, it's just very interesting. Uh, Anthony, can your company manage commercial property in Perth? Um, I don't have any commercial properties that we manage. We've got other properties in Perth, um, manage commercial properties in, uh, in, in, in Sydney and in Brisbane and in Queensland and all throughout New South Wales on that note um why not let's go and uh, look at it so if you want to flip me an email um, and see if we can manage it and look after it for you anthony that would be my honor to be able to do that uh danielle uh, our tenants on Centrelink prove your payments have been suspended or pay up your rent is due we are providing a service to the public look after us and we will look after you exactly exactly right pay up we've all seen that wrapper stitches better pay my money when it comes to collect Right, that's uh, the, the cost of life, right? The cost of life. Uh, Joel, when buying rare metals, what percentage do you buy gold and silver? Uh, that sounds like a very uh, sort of financially advice sort of question. Um, but for me personally, um, I'm more of a silver. And the reason being is that I like holding uh, larger amounts of it. Um, but they both have their place. And the reason why silver is good is because it's an industrial uh, used precious metal, um, as a lot of people out there will talk about. Um, so it means that this computer that I'm recording from, your handset that you're watching this from, all require silver in it. Uh, it's an electronic conductor. Uh, solar panels use it. Um, silver is found throughout all uh, electrical products. Um, so it is being used more than gold. So the potential, the upswing, I like that because of that uh, benefit of it. Um, however, um, I do have, as I said, like a larger, I don't have, you know, a thousand kilos of silver and a thousand kilos of gold. I wish I had a thousand kilos of gold, but, um, you know, the, the gold is much less ratio, but I do have uh, exposure to both uh, of, of them. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't you know, go too crazy on either one of them. And I wouldn't, as I always say to everybody, I wouldn't um, uh, I wouldn't go and sell the house in order to uh, to purchase, um, uh, you know, precious metals. John, uh, interesting question from you, John. Are you still a buyer's agent uh, like back in the pre-2011 days? Yes. Um, I purchased on probably Australia's largest, um, you know, sort of commercial sort of, purchaser of residential real estate. I've purchased, you know, up to around 100 properties a month on behalf of myself and for my clients. Um, I, unlike, you know, there's buyer's agents out there nowadays, there's courses on how to be a buyer's agent. Everyone seems to be some, um, you know, uh, property guru. Um, and I made the decision maybe like three, four years ago um, to talk more about the economy because no one understands this stuff, right? Like you can't fake this shit. Everyone can try and stand in front of their cool car, um, try and pretend to be a property guru. Um, There's so many fakers. Like probably half of them out there in the marketplace are either my client or someone's worked for me and they hide it and they're a bunch of like liars, like really, really bad. But they try and talk and walk and you know what, but um, yeah, at the end of the day, I'd like them to copy 
what's up in here. So uh, that's why I do talk a lot about other stuff nowadays. But yes, uh, I run a buyer's agency here at Be Invested. Uh, I was probably like the third or fourth buyer's agency in the country. Um, started the business back in 2009 in the middle of the GFC. Um, from uh, an aspect of the properties that I buy, all of the properties I locate, negotiate myself, and I present them to my investors. So their portfolios are built up on the properties that I've purchased for them, and they pay me a fee as a buyer's agency, um, and I locate and negotiate those deals in order for them to build their portfolios. So yes, I do still do that. Um, I've never really gone out there and spruiked it. Like a lot of these companies that are like, oh, I'm a property firm, I'm a property firm. Look at me, I'm, you know, telling you I've got 15 properties and I'm, you should trust me, I'm 30 and I've got six properties and all this sort of stuff. A lot of fakers out there, um, which will be really exposed in a, in a market like this. So, um, but yeah, from a perspective of being invested, yes, I run a buyer's agency. Um, that is my core business. I don't promote it. Um, I just talk about interesting things out there. People find their way, they want to talk to me um, and I can help people out on that front as well as other sort of services that um, you know, my businesses uh, help people with. So yeah, if you do need help in building your portfolio, um, I still locate properties below market value, make sure they've got upside for capital growth and have a strong cash flow. Um, some of the sort of properties, I'm just gonna do like a little advertorial in here. Uh, some of the properties that I'm picking up in the market at the moment, um, you know, over in Western Australia, 50,000 or 150,000, rent for 200 to 300 a week. Uh, in in uh, Brisbane, uh, 130, 140 grand. I was picked up for one for 110 grand a day in Brisbane. Uh, really cool property. Rents for like 250 a week. Um, pick up properties there on average about 150 rent for 250. Uh, Gold Coast like 250 rent for 400. Um, Sydney like 280 to 300 uh, rent for 300 a week. Uh, but I do also pick up like up in the property so i've got like stuff that i pick up in the cbd for like 600 700 eastern suburbs uh, all those sort of areas so uh, i purchase nationally um, properties on behalf of myself and for my investors uh, the same sort of properties that i buy for my investors are the ones that i uh, buy for myself as well so yeah i still do do that um paul curious of what uh, part of WA are you into? I'm curious. I'm looking there at the moment. Currently own the Gold Coast and just pulled the equity. Awesome work, Paul. Um, look, I can't give away my secrets. Uh, that's what I do. Um, but um, yeah, if you do want to, I can help you out. Just as John asked beforehand, I can help you out from locating those deals. Um, there was about six um, properties that I negotiated today, uh, which were all um, and I mean, when I'm negotiating these deals, right, I'm like chatting to people doing like portfolio reviews, wrapping up deals. It's never ending from, from my side. Um, but six deals that I wrapped up, uh, I know specifically six uh, that were uh, bank repossessions, uh, which I was dealing directly with the administration companies. And these were not ones that were in, you know, Sydney or that. Um, but there were properties which were picked up that were very well below what the previous owner paid for uh, because they bought in a stupid market many years ago. And, um, you know, picking up stuff that's half or a quarter or even, you know, 10 or 15% of what someone paid in the past is really exciting sort of stuff for me. And um, you know, that's what I, I like to negotiate. So, yeah. Uh, Jeff, uh, is it becoming harder to get finance to buy property? Uh, Jeff, I think for, for us, um, just running dialogue from from in the past um, I think it would be sort of similar um, to go and get finance in the current market it's marginally better um, if you need help on that front let me know I'll put you in contact with someone and see if I can uh, help you get over any sort of hurdles if you have at the moment um, Neil hey Nathan I need to check your lending uh, check your information on lending is tightening based on income type industry etc latest policies not pretty unconditional loans getting withdrawn now is the time to get prepared uh, Neil I, I, I don't disagree with you on that um, that's I just saw your message after the one before that was about finance um, on a, um, a finance front um, you know I run a, a, a fairly decent size uh, mortgage brokerage business that I built um, nine, nine years ago, I set the business up um, for that one. And um, yeah, like some areas uh, in policy is very different. You were right. 
Uh, I was just reading some policy changes the other day regarding people in retail, in uh, in food industry, from memory, and entertainment industry. Um, there's certain areas which the banks are not lending on at the moment because how can they lend someone? Uh, obviously, if they've lost their job and, and whatnot. So um, there is uh, a lot of uh, changes happening out there. That's why it's important to you know pull out an equity before things go bad, like what we've seen. Uh, I've been banging on, I don't know how long you've been following for either, Neil. Uh, I've been banging on about this for 18, 24 months. Get your equity in check, uh, get your loan structured correctly because when uh, things do change, as there becomes more liquidity coming in the market as well, um, it could become harder to obtain finance. But yeah, at the moment, I think we're pretty standard, but some people that have been sitting on the sidelines can start servicing again. There are some people, and it's important that you bring that up, so thank you, Neil, um, that some people will find it more difficult to get lending. So it depends what sort of industry you're in and uh, what your position looks like. So if you need help on that front, anyone need help on that front, hit me up um, and I'll get my team to look at your position and see what we can do for you. Uh, she's um, she's uh, says interest rates are not going to stay this low forever and when the rates go up one day they will those who rush in to get servicing now in this situation will pay feel the pain later and then what trigger another GFC very good uh, question or comment there um, I disagree um, it's impossible for them to increase interest rates now um, and I don't mean that in a flippant or a, 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 a silly way. Um, the government just took out debt of hundreds of billions and will end up in trillions of dollars. Uh, if interest rates go up by even a quarter percent, that means a 100% increase in rate and cost of funding. If it goes up to 1%, that's four times what the RBA is charging at the moment. Uh, we're at a point now because the interest rates are so low, we're stuck here. Uh, the last rate rise occurred in 2010 um, and we have not seen a, a rate rise for in a decade. Um, the reason being is the economy is very screwed up. I'm not disagreeing, um, and it could be very contrarian what I'm saying, and I'm a contrarian investor. Um, as far as you know, interest rates going back up to 3% at the RBA or 2% at the RBA even, or 5% at the RBA is not physically possible for that to occur, everyone will be, go bankrupt. There's too much debt out there in the world, and that is what's gonna eventually cause the death of the dollar and a hyperinflation. So um, very confident on that, and everyone should always make their own sort of research and due diligence, and none of this obviously is financial advice, as always. Um, however, um, yeah, I, I don't see that occurring out there. Uh, Josh, how could I get finance if I have a heap of cash for a deposit, but my books don't necessarily reflect my true earnings? <laughs> well, look, um, you can't go on from, you know, you can only work with what you've got. Um, if you uh, do want to speak to someone, um, you know, you need to be very open to the banks. Uh, they see everything nowadays. Um, so, yeah, if you do need help on that front, flick over an email. Um, I do have some very talented uh, brokers that um, that I work with, and um, you know maybe they can help you. Uh, what you know, finance isn't necessarily just going. Okay, this is you know the bank's policy. Uh, sometimes it's about having the right vehicles in order to get you to where you want to be. Um, so I've, for example, like understanding how the bank's policies work. I've, for example, seen someone that could only service for you know two hundred thousand be able to make a purchase which has had massive cash flow like a $50,000 property that rents for $450 per week. They purchase that property cash and then suddenly the bank looks at your cash flow coming through, goes, well, now you've got an extra $25,000 or $23,000 a year cash flow coming through. Uh, we will now lend you X amount more money so it improves the servicing ability and boosts them up. Uh, in a real way. So yeah, there is always different types of strategies. It might be a matter of buying a couple of properties cash and then going back to the bank and uh, getting loans and obtaining finance later. But you know, none of this is finance advice. Um, if you do need help and do want to discuss that, uh, it's probably more of a conversation for offline and uh, can put you in contact with um, some specialists in that field. Um, 
Danielle, love Birch Feed. Get on it, people. I appreciate that. If you're not on Birch Feed, guys and girls, uh, send an email to my office. It's free, right? It is free, right? And it's not like, oh, you know, give me your credit card details or, you know, I don't want your fucking credit card details. Just email my office, your phone number, I'll add you in there. Um, and I'm sure that, you know, from being awake, I'd rather deal with people that are awake than people that are watching fucking TV and wanting to get these things put into them and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'd rather work with cool people. So if that involves me helping people be red pilled, um, then, you know, really humbled to be able to be with that assistance. So thanks for uh, the positive feedback there, Danielle. RBA say they won't go below uh, 25 basis point. What will force a hand to lower the rates? Good question, Scott. Um, we're really screwed at the moment. They're buying up uh, the bond, the bonds at the moment, and they're trying to artificially keep a flaw in the uh, the bond market, stop it from going negative. So they're buying up the bonds um, using quantitative easing at the moment. Um, they said that interest rates going back 18 months ago were most likely going to go up and there was no chance of them coming down. Within six months, um, interest rates were down for their first 25 basis points. So uh, these lizard looking, uh, you know, blood sucking uh, vermin um, being controlling ruling powers. I don't trust a word that comes out of their mouth. Um, one thing or the other is going to happen. One, they're going to have to keep buying up the bonds to keep a floor in the uh, in the um, in the market, or they're going to have to lower the rates to try and stimulate the economy. Either way, they're going to be printing a shitload of money. It's like, do I pull out this magic ten dollar note from this pocket, or do I pull out these magic two five dollar notes in this pocket? The reality of it is, is they're going to hand out ten bucks, right? It's just got an extra lot of digits on the end of it. So whether they're buying up the bond market, it may not reflect in the uh, negative rate at the moment. However, the same occurrence will do because they're pulling it from over here. Uh, the only difference is that you won't be getting cheaper rates at the moment, but the inflation will still occur from them buying up the balance sheet. So it's just a very interesting time. Will they drop it negative? Who knows? It's happened around the world. Uh, I believe that they will. I believe fundamentally it's impossible unless they want to keep purchasing the balance sheet, uh, which in the US currently at $650 billion a week. $650 billion a week stimulus package going through. Like that is fucking unbelievable, phenomenal. And, uh, you know, in every country around the world, it's always end up with the, uh, the dollar being debased from, um, you know, from, from the currency. So it's very exciting. Um, Charles, uh, low recovery hasn't even started to go down yet. We're a month in, well, you know, time will tell. And, um, you know, in the future, we'll be able to have a bit of banter about it and see who, um, who, you know, who was right and who's wrong. I'm not here to prove anyone right or anyone wrong. I'm just sharing with you my, my view. Um, James, how do we get on board in your investor program? Um, I don't have like a program as such, but if you want to email my office, um, firstly, I can give you free access to lots of cool resources, which is, there's no catch or my staff aren't calling people and going, Hey, right, we're too busy. Like literally I'm in the process of employing, uh, I checked the other day, 21 new staff, uh, for in the business and, um, Five of them are from my uh, you know, customer service team. So um, there's no catch on that. Join up to Perch Feed, send an email to them. Um, uh, there's other services, like I, I have a, um, a shared services business where I help people with all different investing sort of business, whether it be you know, sorting out your, your super fund, whether it's giving you some financial planning, whether it be me giving you some advice around strategy, whether it be um, you know, purchasing, acquiring the properties, help you out on all different uh, fronts. So if you want to reach out to my team, um, we'll be able to help you out and put you on the right track to um, yeah, get you to where you want to be. So yeah. Uh, Alex, off the plan houses versus existing houses. What is your preference? I never buy off the plan, right? Never, no deal. Um, 
buying stuff off the plan. Um, I always get developers that come to me and say, I'll give you $50,000 to sell a property, right? There's so much margin, so much commissions. Whenever um, someone says that they've been burnt from property investing, uh, generally when I ask them, you know, where did you buy? And let me ask you, was it brand new? They're like, yes, I've held it for the last 15 years and it's still worth half of what I paid for it. It's generally from some hyped up, overvalued, uh, property that was never worth what they paid for. Um, existing properties all the time. Um, the only time when you buy them off the plan is if you are building the property yourself. Like that's the only time I touch a new property or if it was a developer that had gone bankrupt and uh, I can pick it up for pennies in the dollar. Wow, lots of questions, guys. Um, when central banks buys up bonds, it should get a positive cash flow from the interest rate on the bonds. What do the central banks do with this cash flow? Um, the central bank is um, uh, printing off debt. Uh, so basically how the, uh, the central banks work, it's not a matter of getting money for them because they can just print infinite amounts of money. Uh, for the central banks, it's a matter of uh, debt and ultimate control. So that's why we're starting to see um, the Windows guy uh, that's talking about doing these things to everybody and try to brainwash them and suddenly he's a doctor and a world regarded medical professor um, and all those people that are that are out there giving a lot of this advice are normally actors anyway but um, but uh, these entities call it a organization or a who or whatever um, uh, they're the controlling entities these entities end up controlling and they're the shadow government so they're controlling so they're indebting and enslaving parts of the economy parts of the world and countries around the world um, so you know money doesn't always exist in the format of you know pieces of paper with dead criminals printed on them uh, it, it also converts back to the core purpose of what that buys um, you know human capital is far greater than, than, than money um, you know, you can leverage, you know, people greater than you can money. You can leverage, you know, uh, countries, leaders, businesses, whatever. So it's giving the central banks a lot of power. So that's, yeah, basically where I see that. Um, Frank, will people with property get job seeker? Um, I believe so. Um, yeah, I believe that they will. So, um, I don't know exactly though, so don't hold me to that, but I believe that they would. So I don't think it's means tested. I think it's just, you've got to prove that you've lost your job and then you obtain that. So um, let me know if someone has got an answer for Frank, that would be an interesting one. Uh, someone with property, have you got job seeker? Um, that would be great to, to know there. Uh, Jack, if you were a first time investor right now, where, when, and what would you buy? Um, how long's a piece of string? A lot of people always ask me, Nathan, where should I buy? What should I buy, etc." The property is purely the vehicle on the chessboard. Um, the destination is the most important part. Where you are is the other important part. And then working out what vehicles you need in order to get from here to here. Uh, people say, oh, I don't want to buy units, right? I own shitloads of units, right? I own 100 odd units probably. Um, and I mean like individual units and whatnot. People go, well, why don't you have blocks of land? Why don't you have blocks of units, whatever? And I do have them. But the thing is, is that obtaining, if it was my way, I'd have 200 properties, which were 100 acre blocks, and it'd have 100 units on each one. But it's not the way that it works. Um, it's important at certain times in your journey, you'll need certain vehicles. So I couldn't sit here today and say, you know, I've got a property in Sydney, and uh, that's 495,000 at the moment, uh, comparable sales at 700,000, and it's in a very blue chip area. But if that's not the right property for you, it's not the right property. So um, I like capital cities, big tick for me if it's in a capital city. I like neutral positive cash flow, big tick if it has that, and it must be below market value. So there's a lot of properties in Australia, um, so it can tick a lot of boxes, but it just depends what's your budget, what are you working with, what's a deposit to be able to get into. So there is lots of variables. If you'd like, Jack, um, flick an email to my office and I'll organise a call for 15 minute chat, have a chat to you about where you're at and help put you on the right track. And that I'll extend that to all of you out there. Um, only 15 minutes, 
not like this phone call, uh, not like this Facebook Live that's gone for an hour, but uh, 15 minutes if you are stuck with your portfolio, need help with direction for the next layer of your portfolio, don't know how to turn to next for your portfolio, um, send an email to my office, make sure first you get on Birch Feed, but send an email to my office and, um, and I'll organize for a free 15 minute chat with myself and give you feedback on your position of how you can you know, push forward and, and take advantage in this market, whether you're a first time investor like Jack or whether you're you know, a 50 or 100 property portfolio. Um, Eden, I uh, forgot to ask you today, how long do you think the low interest rate will last? I think I just answered, answered that beforehand. Hopefully you were um, uh, watching, but we haven't seen a rate rise for over a decade and I don't believe um, we will see uh, interest rates rise anytime soon. I believe there is a lot more mess, like someone mentioned beforehand that we're not even at the bottom of the market. Um, a lot of people are expecting fear, right? People can't go bankrupt when they're paying 0% interest rates. People can't go bankrupt when they're telling you not to pay your mortgage. People can't go bankrupt when they say, look, just don't worry about paying your staff. We will pay you so you can pay your staff. People can't go bankrupt when they get told, hey, look, here's a 0% loan. People can't go bankrupt when they get told, you know, don't pay your taxes, right? And we're in that world today. Uh, will it disappear overnight? No, it will not, guys. It will not disappear anytime soon. We're going to need to see stimulus package after stimulus package after stimulus package after bailout after bailout after bailout. We haven't seen the start of this yet, guys. We haven't seen the start of it. We haven't seen the companies go bust. We haven't seen the airlines go bust. We haven't seen the commercial real estate trusts go bust. We haven't seen people's super funds get poof. Back to the money heaven, all the money disappears out of it, just like it was magic, boom, gone. Right? Um, so we're going to need to see a lot more stimulus injected in the market. That will keep the markets up. It will keep pushing the markets up um, and it will ultimately kill the, 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 the cost of money. And it's a checkmate position. Um, if they increase interest rates, how can they increase interest rates? No one's got a job. So it's just a, a very interesting time. So I think that we've got interest rates that are here to stay for a very long period of time, Eden. So yeah. Uh, Judy, uh, hello, Nathan. Very interested in all that you have to say. Thank you, Judy. Uh, like having you on uh, as part of the community. And thanks a lot for everyone else for tuning in this evening. Um, thanks for tonight. Thanks, Wesley, for tuning in. Uh, Nino, how do we get on the Birch feed? Uh, flick an email to admin at beinvested.com.au, uh, A-D-M-I-N at B-I-N-V-E-S-T-E-D.com.au. Um, flick your phone number over and my team will add you into Birchfeed. So, yeah. Uh, Neil, uh, Allianz has stopped uh, and only doing building insurance. Uh, thanks for sharing that, Neil. Um, yeah, was, you know, you've got to go and check through those insurance companies. I know as of last week that they were like some of the insurance companies were. I've seen here from John, try Honan Insurance, maybe even speak to an insurance broker. Uh, maybe I can try and find out. Actually, I might go and ask an insurance broker that I know as well. It's in my uh, business, uh, in my business, in my building, uh, in my office building. Uh, I might go and ask him who is and you know see if there's anyone that can help you out. Um, uh, Danielle, 5G, no thanks, guys. Uh, be careful of those big shiny towers that are going out. I was out on the weekend, took a video, a uh, photo, sorry, of a brand new 5G tower that had been installed in the last two weeks. Um, it, it's very shiny. Uh, it wasn't there specifically because I had seen this location like the other day. Um, but yeah, with it, uh, 5G could be uh, a very, very crazy thing if we look at what was 1G, what was 2G, what was 3G, which was 4G, what is 5G? What does it run through? You don't even need a handset for it to run. Like it, it controls waves and vibrations of people movement um, and controls people's thoughts and puts information in their head. It's a very interesting time. So yeah, thanks, Danielle, for reminding me on 5G today. <laughs> a lot about it in Birchfeed, guys. Uh, Mark, you mentioned the Birchfeed about the snake on the stick last week in the Who and other health symbols. There's a story 
uh, in the Old Testament where the Israelites were being bitten by swarms of venomous snakes. God told Moses to craft a bronze snake wrapped around a stick. Anyone who looked up upon it was saved from death. Whether it means something else now, who knows? Uh, but that's where I see the literal origin exactly, right? Um, and I'm not going to get into biblical proportions with everyone. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, dealing with, you know, Jesus, Buddha, Allah, any other religion out there, uh, you will see signs out there, right? It doesn't matter which religion anyone believes in or doesn't believe in, right? I find it interesting to observe that why is there certain things that are just throughout history, right? People can't agree on it, that's fine, right? But how come uh, these certain uh, things occur, right? And just like on the matrix, uh, when they go, that was deja vu, right? People need to be paying attention to the signs, right? Because there's a lot more to it um, than meets the eye and <laughs> no pun intended. But um, I did just post for those of you in Birchfeed a very uh, controversial video, one of the ones from Friday that I uh, had posted. It was the 13 parts in the series. Uh, I posted one which talked about, um, what was it? It's so fucked up, but I don't even know what it was called. It was a, um, um, it was the um, spirit cooking, spirit cooking. Go look up spirit cooking. Some fucked up shit, guys. Really, really bad. Uh, video is probably going to get cancelled now because of it censored, but it is what it is. But um, the new face of that Windows company, which you know, where a lot of you are watching this from, um, and that fella from Who, we'll call it Who because you know they're actually picking up voice and things that get said, so it's really crazy. Um, uh, that chick is now the face of that company. Right, this the one cooks the you know it's crazy, crazy. Anyway, um, why are people complaining about five G? I don't know. I've got two heads now. Um, uh, isn't it too early to buy? Um, should we wait for the bloodbath, David? I just covered um, as to why uh, I feel like we won't see the bloodbath um, out there in the marketplace. Um, Peter, Nathan, in Victoria, what suburbs would you invest with a budget of four fifty k? Um, I would invest with less than 450. I would want larger parcels of land on the outside if I was uh, purchasing in Victoria. Um, there's so much being built, like literally you can just drive two minutes down the road and build another and another hour down and build another and build all the way out to Albury while we're at it. Um, so I think there's, you know, other areas apart from Victoria to invest in. I don't know if you're from Victoria or not. Um, I think it... It's important to have a, a balanced portfolio without borders and boundaries of each state. Um, but if you would like to take me up on that offer, um, flick an email to my office and we can have a chat about it offline, about what uh, sort of properties and what the portfolio could look like for you. Um, Gurks, uh, it will come to a point where people will beg and want uh, the chip because it will make them feel simplified and more secure and more healthy monitoring. People will elect to be microchipped exactly. Um, I think there's a, a lot of people that are waking up to it and go like, you're fucking programming me on this stuff, right? And it's something that people need to... Um, uh, I look at it and it's like when you have a conversation with people, if people want to Google uh, an image, Google image, uh, flu ride stand, and you can literally see people's face like, oh, 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 oh. and they're like, look, you're stupid, right? And you can tell uh, who are the agent Smiths in the world, right? Who are the agents? Who are the agent Smiths out there? Uh, Jack, uh, what apps do you use to purchase crypto and precious metals? Um, I use CoinSpot. Uh, I use lots of other different exchanges, um, lots of different platforms that you can use. Um, but I'll leave that for someone else maybe to comment on for you guys. Um, Hayden, how's Eddie? <laughs> Mate, I've got no idea who that guy, how that guy's going, but I know he used to work for me. Um, I know he didn't just work at McDonald's. Um, and, you know, sometimes we know people when they work for us and we get to know them and stuff like that. So I don't know how he's going. Uh, last I heard, you know, he's some guru uh, and he's uh, on that list of, uh, you know, what we were talking about before him, so it's pretty funny. Um, Sean, I've never looked at using a buyer's agent. Uh, what do the fees for that type of service look like? 
Um, lots of different buyers agents out there, lots of different prices. Um, I, I work on a flat fee model, um, two different fee structures, um, depending on what type of property it is and what type of asset. And I always like to make sure that when you know I'm purchasing properties on behalf of my owners and I'm sort of paying dividends on the fees that they're, that, that they're paying uh, for the purchase. Um, if you'd like to, Sean, uh, flick a, a, an email to the admin at beinvested.com.au email. Um, and booking for a 15 minute chat, happy to have a chat to you a little bit further about you know your strategy, make sure that you know we're comfortable working together and all that sort of stuff and talk about those things in a little bit more detail. Uh, who values the properties you find for your investors uh, from Andrew? Um, banks generally value them uh, when people are purchasing. The banks will only ever sort of confirm the purchase price. Um, when I purchase properties on behalf of my investors, I always provide RP data reports so you can see recent sales and other properties currently on the market, get a greater understanding of what's happening so you can compare apples for apples and, and see what's going on there so you can make an educated decision. So um, just in the types of properties that I buy for my investors, uh, it's very fast paced because once I get a deal accepted, you know, we need to move on it quickly, uh, otherwise owners will sell it for more money. Um, but um, yeah, basically, um, so I'm just reading more comments that are there. Um, but yeah, when, when, when I purchase um, the, the, the properties, um, I give you enough information for you to be able to go, okay, cool, I can look at all the recent properties for sale, all the properties that are sold, using the same sort of information that valuers use. Um, so you can value the property yourself, you can go and do all your research, um, I'll lead you there so then you can you know, make an educated decision and go, yep, I see the value in this um, and I can see how I can make money. Uh, quite generally, quite often, you know, picking up properties that are you know, a lot less, like 20% less, 50% less than what people had previously paid for them or previously had been selling for. Um, or you know, I picked up one the other day that was in an area, it's not on the market, 350 grand for a three bedroom townhouse, rent for 400 bucks a week. Um, I had um, the person I, I just sent it to straight away, they said yes within like half an hour. Um, the next cheapest property in the market is a two bedroom red brick unit for 489,000. So sort of, yeah, depends on the, the deal and you know, every deal is different, everyone's position is different. But yeah, the, the valuers, you can get an independent valuation, um, but I always try and provide enough information so you can see the value there. Uh, more value than $10,000, John said, yes, um, exactly. Uh, Josh, how do we get in touch? Uh, flick an email to uh, admin at beinvested.com.au. Um, if it's regarding Birch Feed, which everyone should be on Birch Feed, it's free. Like, no, hey, give me a credit card. Like, I'm never going to charge you for this stuff. Like, it's literally just stuff I come across on a day to day basis um, in a private community. I don't have it where anyone can talk to me. I just shoot out data. So there's no commenting, no liking, no nothing. I just shoot out data. You guys do whatever you want with that data, and it's for free. So um, that's one option. Second one is if you want to have a 15 minute phone chat, um, talking about your position, speak to my team and they might be kind enough to book you in uh, for a chat with us. So yeah, cool. Uh, Paul, thanks for answering dinner time. Got to go. Enjoy your dinner. You keep up the great work too. Uh, yeah, bro, you were right regarding the UBI. Uh, we did have that chat. My question is, what is the upside to this pending dictatorship? <laughs> yeah, it is. Eh? It's crazy. And the UBI guaranteed rent. Uh, what else, if any? Uh, all the things we spoke about in the past, really, really crazy, crazy sort of amount of um, you know, stimulus packages coming into uh, globally around the world. Um, you know, from all different aspects. Uh, yeah. Are there any, any lenders looking at foreign income uh, from Nino? Yes, there is. Uh, I've got a specialist that actually specializes in foreign income. Um, if you'd like to um, flick me a, an email, uh, my team will organize a chat for you. Uh, keep up the videos, uh, still waiting for my birch feed access. Matt, um, maybe just send another email to the office just in case they have missed it or, you know, things are going crazy out of our office at the moment. Just so much to uh, keep on top of and obviously make sure that our uh, community are, you know, taking advantage of the opportunities out there. So um, yeah, apologies if it's been a bit of a delay. Um, flick us an email, flick us a DM in here. Uh, worst case scenario, if there's something going wrong with your email and, um, and we'll, we'll get you in there. Rachel, I better get a fixed home loan now or variable rate and get fixed once the rate goes down again. Look, I can't give you feedback on whether rates are gonna come down lower or not. Or to fix or not. 
Uh, one thing that I've found very amusing is the banks have made the fixed rates lower than the variable rates, right? Why would the banks do that? They're making a bet on themselves because then they'll make more money of it, meaning that there's a good chance that it could possibly, potentially maybe come down lower. Um, the fear that I have and why I haven't fixed my rates is that when the rates come down um, again, when the rates come down, um, what happens if you're fixed for three years and they come down and hit a low point and you're still fixed and you can't go back? So, you know, they're the questions you need to be asking yourself. But if you're comfortable with the rates that they are, you know, then they're questions that you need to answer for yourself on that front. But if you need help uh, on that front, reach out to my team. I have a team of very sophisticated uh, finance managers. Um, they can sort of give you some more advice around that. And Tommy, hey, Nath, how do investors safeguard through potential hyperinflation? Will the government keep pushing stimulus into the sheeple communities? Uh, com communities. They should be communities, right? Because that's what they're making, it, communism. Uh, will it stop and people have to start living like Mad Max, apocalyptic, apocalyptic times? Again, thank you for your non-financial advice. Thanks, Tommy. Um, I hope you're doing well, mate. Um, I believe that they'll have to keep stimulating because if they don't, right, us being the human capital for them, I keep using that word, uh, means that, you know, if we're not well and fed and, you know, being good little slaves, we're not going to perform the most. So uh, ultimately the ruling class, we're just a cattle class and they need us as a part of their system. So, you know, if they let turn Mad Max, then their system fails. So they're going to have to keep propping it up and manipulating it for us. Steve and Ethan, how do you find the time to watch all the videos that you post in the Birch feed along with running your business as daily life? Mate, I put videos. There's a little tip, actually, um, a little tip for uh, everybody that watches the videos. Um, so when I go, I, I actually only sleep for about four hours a day. So I uh, do it about 20 hours a day. Um, I do all my emails at like two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, watch financial markets, watch different videos. Um, you can actually, so sometimes in my sleep, I'll play videos and um, be able to listen to it in my sleep. Um, so then I only go to a light sleep so I can absorb the info. Um, as well as um, you can actually put videos on like a one and a half, 1.25, one and a half, uh, two times sort of play. Uh, so it depends how good you get at it. And it's like listening to a rap song when you listen to it, but you can download that data like, um, and uh, download that data uh, faster. So if you want to watch a 20 minute video in 15 minutes, you can speed the video up to you know one and a half speed and it goes and you can listen to the words as the info is being dropped in there. So just a bit of a heads up on that front. Um, how do you think the farmers borrowing money will fare? Um, Zero percent. Uh, I actually feel that there'll be uh, some issues around um, food supply um, uh, in the coming little while. And um, I think everybody, and this is probably a video for another day, I made a post the other day about creating your own food and whatnot. Um, I will be talking about that a little bit more. I'll keep it as a separate topic. I won't blur the, 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 the information for tonight's viewing. But, um, but yeah, with it, um, I think that we'll see a lot of good agricultural land uh, retain its value. Um, and I think that we'll end up seeing people more forced to the cities and stuff. Um, but where you need to be going is onto that farmland and being able to be self-sufficient and taking control of your own personal liberty and freedom. Imagine rocking up to Coles and Woolworths and not being able to get access to food. Like that sounds really, really shit. Um, I went to Bunnings yesterday and um, I walked in the door and they go, no, 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 you can't. this is the exit. You've got to go around there. And I was like, all right, I'll go up the stairs, right? And I'm walking this, the second side of it. And then they go, no, 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 wrong door. Please get out. Like as if I was like some fucking um, alien or something. It was like zombie, uh, kill him or something. And then I walked around. They told me to go around the side. And there was this line, like everyone was like standing up one and a half meters away. There was markers on the ground. It's like a U. I looked and I saw everybody in the line, right? This is like, you could imagine, I'm happy to put this in a video, right? Um, imagine me being told that I can't walk into the shop and I looked at everyone, I was like, you guys are fucked. And I just laughed and walked off, right? I'm like, imagine being in a world like this. This is the world. Imagine just having your own access. Why go down the shops? Why get like fucking all this communist stuff? You want to be self-sufficient. You want to be able to, you know, 
control your own food supply. And I think everybody should, like whether it be you know, having your own chickens to grow your own eggs, whether it be having your own food supply, that, you know. But make sure if you're growing your own food, you don't just go to Bunnings or so and buy some GMO affected seeds that are like, you know, just like crap. Imagine having like a, a, a McDonald's cheeseburger tree or an organic vegetable sort of tree, right? You want to have organic food that you're growing um, and making sure that the, the original source of that uh, food. So a lot of my um, sort of uh, produce that I grow uh, comes from um, the seeds I actually get out of the fruit uh, and, and vegetables as well. So just a topic for another day, guys. How do we arrange the 15-minute chat? Email my office, admin at beinvested.com.au. Um, have a chat with them. Um, they will organize a chat for us. So, yeah. Um, uh, can you call up anyone from the team or do you need to give your number uh, for them to call? Um, can you call up anyone from the team or do you need to give your number for them to call? Uh, look, um, it's best to give them your number and then they can call you or give them a call. Um, uh, I've got skeleton staff in the office, not because they're all dead, like the media is trying to propaganda everyone to be, uh, but skeleton staff and the fact that, you know, some of our staff have chosen to go and work uh, off-site in their own place. Uh, some are still in the office. Um, so the phones are a little bit slower. So some of the brands, um, you call, leave a voicemail, it comes via the computer, they listen to it, they call you back. Um, but it just, just depends on, on what... Uh, product or service that you need to, to talk to in, 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 in my businesses. So, but yeah, have, have a chat with my team. The email's there. Probably best have a conversation over email and go from there. Uh, Vic, I just sent an email to join Birchfeed. Looking forward to more information or more informative material. Thanks for that, Vic. Uh, welcome also to the new like 670 or whatever subscribers to Birchfeed over the last little while. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been really um been really cool seeing the community grow over the course of the last you know few weeks and uh you know, it's just a very interesting world that we're in nowadays so yeah mm -hmm. uh, steph it's crazy saw it today uh not too sure what you're commenting on but um hopefully you're doing well steph um best tips on cryptos to invest at the moment uh lots of them out there uh probably good for another video i know i keep talking about crypto in another video um but yeah, I'll get to it shortly. Um, uh, Luke, uh, hey Nathan, sent emails to admin and can you get started? Just waiting for a return call, ready to get going with you guys if possible. Luke, I uh, look forward to helping you out. Um, did you just email them today or maybe they've tried calling you back? I'll um, I'll get the team to, um, to get on top of that and, and give you a call. There could be a bit of a backlog there um, from... Yeah, calling everyone, these things are crazy at the moment. So apologies if there's any sort of delay. Um, as you could imagine, um, you know, feedback, advice and whatnot is pretty uh, crazy at the moment. Um, everybody's wanting it. And how do you think things will go for Mr. Vax? He seems to be running around promoting his own party. Um, it's interesting, very interesting, very interesting times. And, um, you know, this guy here, is um is it's very deep um who uh the windows guy uh, who his father's related to who the family's related to it's very very inbred and very ugly so um i don't know right people are silly right we've got um two-thirds of the world uh, one third of the world's population begging to be under house arrest at the moment um, so if they're ready to be under house arrest, um, and you can propagate that and, and, and uh, brainwash everybody, then who knows what else they're capable of doing. So yeah, so if decentralize the food supply, we take our own power back, correct, uh, working and growing our own food garden now too. Awesome stuff. That's good. Everybody should be uh, taking control of their own food. So, um, uh, I have to line up the coals that my own, I say, like waiting to win a prize is crazy. You get to pay overpriced for broccoli and it's all disgusting and not made properly. You know, it's made out of some, um, manipulated sort of gene 
that's been spliced sort of uh, food, which, you know, who knows what chemicals it's pumped full of and, and uh, things it does to your body. Um, just watched the movie called The Biggest Little Farm, highly recommended for inspiration. I'll go check that out, Steph. I posted some um, videos on gardening yesterday in, uh, in Birchfeed as well, uh, looking at, um, you know, how to grow food and uh, one foot gardens as well. So some people have got small spaces, so they can only have like, you know, four foot by four foot of a, you know, like my sort of dining table, that's a bit longer, but um, with um, having, you know, only small gardens, you can grow lots of produce out of that. Everybody should be, you know, taken back their own rights. Uh, Jeremy, why can't we use stimulus to claim wages back when we pay contractors? It's bullshit. Um, look, there is some parts of the market which is really, really not cool. Um, I have a lot of contractors as well. Um, I haven't thought about it all that much. Um, there's some people that will miss out in this, um, but I'm sure structuring, like I did bring... Uh, you know, Ridwan, uh, who's a very, um, like, I've got a lot of confidence in what he does. Uh, I've seen his work over the course of the last, you know, almost decade now uh, and how he's been able to help people and how he is with business and whatnot. Um, if you have got a, a business and, you know, I said to everyone that I'm happy to have a 15-minute chat. If you need help with your business, like yourself there, Jeremy, um, flick an email and say, can I speak to Ridwan and I'll hook you up. Um, there could be ways of how you can structure things different um, and be able to, you know, help uh, streamline things and, you know, be able to um, protect your business and get most productive out of your business at the moment. So uh, on uh, that note, guys, I do have some questions from other community members from beforehand, which um, I'm just going to read now uh, to enter them because I said I was going to uh, answer your questions for you. Um, would you still recommend buying unregistered land in Sydney, not a house to be rezoned in a few years? Um, that question, uh, Jamin, um, that could be referring to around Riverston area or Marsden Park, if I could imagine. Um, would I recommend buying properties in that area? Uh, I was picking up stuff in those areas for like uh, 10,000 and 15,000 10 years ago. Um, I was selling them for like 50 grand, like I just buy them and put them back on the market. And it was pretty cool for flipping at the time. The prices now, I think they're very expensive and I'd spend a lot better, spend my money a lot better elsewhere. Um, if we're looking at um, like acreages in Sydney, uh, they can be very expensive depending on your position. Um, one of the things that I was thinking about talking about recently is uh, 35 acres by 35 uh, in Sydney, um, I've been a big avid fan of building large land bank uh, areas and hence why I'm going to talk about something interesting with you guys shortly on another video um, about buying land. I'm not a big fan of buying land if you haven't got the foundation set up correctly. Um, buying large unregistered land uh, has massive, massive holding costs. That some of my properties are negative, um, large amounts, right? And people will sit there and say, well, Nathan, you, you talk about buying positive cash flow. I'm only able to buy such large land holdings because I've got the foundations right and my cash flow is so positive that I can add these things to it. So depends on your situation. Um, uh, Josh, have you got any properties in Perth that need painting? Josh, uh, we will be talking uh, when I do have some uh, and I will be sending them your way. So, um, yeah, I'll keep you in mind for that. Um, Sorry, but does it pop up in your feed? I'm not too sure what that um, refers to. Are you buying large blocks and multifamily units? And uh, can other investors join in? Um, I buy individual units. I buy all different types of properties. I own medical centers, I own shopping centers, I own motels, farmland, um, all different stuff, blocks of units. Um, I don't buy... Um, you know, I think what you might be referring to is like a fund um, and there's a guy in the US that's uh, very loud um, and uh, he's coming, look, appears that he's becoming a bit unraveled at the moment. Uh, a guy by the name of Grant, I'll let you um, work out his surname if that's who you might be. It sounds like you might be talking about his sort of fundamental policies there. Um, the guys like that, um, 
I don't own properties with other people. I don't own properties where I sort of go halves and quarters and tenths and whatever. Uh, I think everybody should buy their own assets and own their own sort of portfolio. So I can help you on that front though. Um, is a property going to hold up in today's climate? From Darren, yes. Uh, I talked about that beforehand. Uh, Andrew, there are rumours about a wealth tax to fix the budget situation after the scandemic. Thoughts on this? I can't say the word with a number in it, the one and the nine number. I can't say it. I've literally, to this day, I've never said it. I can't say that. Um, but is there a tax to, uh, to come in? Uh, on this, the tax is called inflation. The tax is called inflation. Um, and it will be coming for everyone to pay. Uh, Matt, why did what do you think the David Ike uh, real London real interview that got banned on Demtube? Um, interesting. Um, everyone's been saying this guy's a bit crazy for over the years. Uh, I've always watched with uh, interesting sort of feedback. Uh, interesting just watching um, and you know he's pretty interesting sort of a uh, guy um, there's a lot of uh, censorship going on at the moment lots of uh, stuff that people that the, that the algorithms don't want you to hear and see and witness um, so yeah with it um, I think there's a lot of truth out there so um, uh, uh, cool so that's all those questions um, uh, the permaculture community is an amazing community. Another great book is called uh, Retro Suburbia, and they are giving on, uh, online copy away for free to people who to help them empower them. Great, rebellious, and inspiring community. Steph, uh, yeah, I'll go check that out. I haven't seen it, um, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I know that you share very same sort of views as myself. Um, Glenn, uh, Charles, doubting no dig gardening. Thanks, Glenn, for sharing that. Sean, unraveling, haha, uh, the person's name there. I knew there was uh, off with that guy a few years ago. Um, I, <laughs> uh, he's great, it's a shill artist. Look, um, I had the opportunity to meet with him for an interview and it never transpired. And uh, I felt at the time that it was probably for the better. Um, but you know, I don't wish bad things upon people, but you know, I'll just be very cautious. Like if you don't own the asset, you don't own it, right? So all the trusts, all of that, like people say, oh, it's too hard to get in a property. I've only got 20 grand or I can't get a loan or I've only got 50 grand. I buy properties for 15 grand. I buy properties for 50 grand. I buy properties for 100 grand. I buy properties for 200, 300, 500, million, 2 million, 3 million, 5 million, 6 million. Um, you know, it's never too small of an amount um, to get into a property. You get into a fund will cost you more than 15 grand. I can get you into a physical piece of real estate for 15, like one, five, triple zero. Like it's not me saying 50 wrong, it's 15 grand. You can get little cheap properties like that. So yeah, I don't buy into people's funds because you can't control that. Um, last one here, James. Thanks, Nathan. It's been great. Just got back in touch with your page and feed. I'll send an email to you and look forward to talking with you and your team. Thanks, James. I appreciate that. Um, Matt, how's the billionaire by 40 uh, goal tracking? Really, really great. Um, so um, <laughs> with it, uh, lots of questions come through. I'm going to end it on the 40 billionaire by 40. Uh, I said a few years ago, I want to be a billionaire by the age of 40. Um, so if hyperinflation kicks in, we're all going to be billionaires by the time I'm 40. Um, uh, am I, uh, you know, sitting here at 250 million or 300 million or 500 million? Uh, no, uh, my net worth is probably, I don't know, 100 mil at the moment, uh, looking at all different types of assets and vehicles. Um, I believe that a billionaire by 40 is still achievable. I'm hustling to be able to do that. Um, I look at, I try to break down everything. Like, so if I want to be a billionaire by 40, then what do I have and what can I do? If I, I was thinking about it, like literally this morning about a billionaire by 40, I thought to myself, I've helped out over a thousand people make a million dollars, right? There's a billion dollars just within a community, right? But I'm talking my own funds, right? Like my own property, my own assets, my own uh, investments, my own businesses, my own everything. Um, but yeah, like, is it, you know, helping out a billion people? Be able to you know empower their lives there's, there's lots of cool things that are a billion but i think you know maybe by the time i'm 40 maybe by the time i'm 45 um that 
a billion dollars may not seem too much because it appears that they can just keep printing billions of dollars worth of money every week and give that out to everybody. So um, on that note, their quantitative easing, their money printing exercises, their fear mongering, their um, creation of opportunities out there is going to help and assist in me being able to get to a billion dollar status by the age of 40. So yeah, just the hustle's real. So um, on that note, guys, uh, just want to say thank you uh, for, for checking in. Uh, I'm going to go for a big walk now um, and uh, do some exercise and then I'm going to come back and do people's emails. But on that note, guys, I just want to thank you for tuning in. I'm going to try and uh, do Facebook Lives every uh, Tuesday. Um, if you need help on anything, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, if you have any thoughts for discussion, feel free to hit me up and I'll talk about that here. Uh, if you are not on Birch Feed, send your email, send, email your phone number to admin at beinvested.com.au. If you want to have a chat to talk about your portfolio, your position, see how me or my team can help you out, um, feel free to send an email over to my team or call my team and organize for the chat. It's better to email at the moment because there's so much inquiry and people wanting to chat. Um, and yeah, on that note, guys, I will see you next Tuesday. Have a good one. Bye for now.